Okay, turn these guys off for a moment. Uh, hi, I'm Eric Hermanson. Uh, this is a, a special day for me. I've rigged up quite a few things here in order to show off a game, not a computer game, not a video game, but a physical thing in this world, a uh, pen and paper style, tabletop, whatever you want to call it. It's like a book. You solve puzzles in it. It's a game. Uh, it's really cool. I'm going to show you about this thing. And this is uh, the first day of its Kickstarter. Um, it's not my project. It's a friend of mine. It's a former colleague, uh, Mike Reimer. We worked on some games uh, in the past. And he went on to buy from me my game company called Carabelle Games. Uh, and, you know, we uh, went our separate ways amiably. And uh, every once in a while, I I see Mike doing something new, and this is one of those things. And it's worth talking about. It's worth showing off a little bit. Uh, twisty little passages. So this setup we've got here. Um, it's a tabletop. There's a camera that I rigged up over here. I'm, I'm kind of proud of this. You should always be impressed with yourself. Um, it's a lot more fun that way. It only took me about an hour to get all this stuff put up and uh, actually I had a fair amount of luck. There's a high chance, very high chance, of technical difficulties. In a moment I'm going to walk around to the other side. Uh, you could call this the preamble because nobody ever rolls in right at on the hour at the start of a stream. Um, I feel like talking just a little bit just so some people can come in a little bit late and uh, still be part of the live experience and still track along with it. Because I'm going to play this game uh, with very little preparation. Um, I did like one sample page of it a while back, months back really, and I forgot most of the rules. So I'm going to be looking over the rules again uh, to, to uh, reacquaint myself with them. And I've got this iPad right here which also shows me chat messages. And I see Mike Reimer is here with us too, so the creator is present. Mike Reimer is right here with us on this journey. And Mike, you sent me um, some modifications to the rules. Uh, I kind of skimmed through it. I did not quite integrate them into my, my way of thinking. I will do the best I can, but I'll also uh, kind of keep an eye out in the chat session for things that I, I might have missed that you can draw my attention to. Um, so let me explain that a little bit better. The copy that I've got of Twisty Little Passages is a, a prototype that Mike sent me, I don't know, it must have been close to a month ago. In that time, he's had several playtesting sessions, he's had lots of feedback, and of course, there's going to be changes that are made to the rules. And um, um, so he sent me an addendum uh, recently, just with a few things to take into account. And my brain is kind of a scramble. I rolled in here, uh, you know, just after work, and then I set all this stuff up. And I was like skimming over it as fast as I could to try to get, maybe I won't get it. Uh, maybe I won't uh, understand all the additions to the rules as I play. So uh, keep in mind if there's anything that seems to be off because of that. This version that you're seeing is not the very, very, very final. It looks pretty much the same as far as I can tell, but uh, Mike has polished the final product uh, significantly. Um, but still, I think this version is going to be really cool. Yeah, all right, let's see what we got. It's a real canine. Yeah, yeah, so Mike put a lot of work into this. So uh, a little background on this. Um, so there was an original game called uh, Tower of the Sorcerer, and it was not it was not very impressive to look at, but it was pretty cool in some other ways. Like you, it just looks kind of like a retro top-down RPG type game, a little bit like the oldest Zelda graphics, 8-bit type stuff. But when you play it. The cool thing about it is 
Um, it's entirely turn-based and it's entirely deterministic. There's no luck involved. There's rules for how combat works out and if you follow them as you, as you walk around through this dungeon, uh, you end up uh, you end up solving a, um, a logical puzzle. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, surreal. Um, the next iteration of this game, Mike made with help from others, called Drawed RPG. So, uh, you're right. Yeah, it is a lot like that. So, uh, thinking about from like maybe the RPG tabletop gamers experience, uh, to play this game, where you wander around through dungeons, there's not really any role playing at all. It's the opposite extreme of of uh, a role playing game. Sometimes people say they uh, want a role playing game where there's more role playing. If you are saying you want a game where there's more combat, this would be um, th this would be the the type of experience you're looking for. But an interesting thing is there's no dice. There's no dice in this game, and it's a solo game. And you resolve all the combat through rules that are extremely well defined and simple. Uh, but you basically have to do a certain amount of resource management so that you'll be able to solve the puzzles that are in the game. Um, so let me, let, me, let me get to the game and, and show you what that looks like. Turn these lights back on. It's going to be a little bit fiddling here. It's like a roguelike that isn't random. I would agree with that. All right. I'm so proud of this uh, this weird camera setup that I made. Uh, let me make sure I don't have an excessive glare. Okay. Now, as we play through this, um, I encourage help from people in the in the chat. I'm going to uh, show you the introduction pages and let you read along with it, uh, uh, along with me as I go. So it might take me a little bit of time to kind of get used to this, this new layout of uh, how everything's arranged. So I can see here's the page space over here. I've got like a little um, guide that's set up so that I can kind of move the page where it needs to be to be on camera. Uh, it might be a little bit tough for people to read that. I recommend for sure going full screen because we're going to be showing some text. Um, and I will stop looking at the computer screens. I will begin looking at the game proper. And I've got my iPad off the left so I can still see I can still see uh, the chat. Awesome. So you don't play with dice in this game. Uh, you play with a dry erase pen. This one is kind of a cool one. It's got a, a finer tip to it. It's got a nice little um, eraser thing on the end. So it's, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to sell these or anything, but if you are interested, interested in a nice one, this Pro Marks is pretty good. Um, but any dry erase marker will work. Somebody said, can you use grease pencils? I don't know. I don't know if you can. Anyways, so first off, let's just show the cover. The cover's pretty cool, too. So it's a nice, glossy booklet with the, the spiral binding. And some person might say, oh, why a spiral bind? Why not just like a, a nice, proper book binding? No, if you want it to lay flat, and with this game, you really do. The spiral binding is uh, much better for that purpose. So, prototype, and we go on. It's a little flavor. Here's your character, Ren, an El Cassie spy, oath bound by the Silverin Order to defeat the evil demon king Mordrak. All right, so there's your conflict. Table of contents and credits, we were looking at that before. Um, all right, story. I'll go ahead and read it out loud. 
The lamplight grew dim. Two men stood over a loose stack of parchment. Are you sure this is the one? part of the Grand Marshal. The final one to round out the Siege of Thirty. The ardent sage responded with quiet certainty. Fear spreads like smoke across the continent. Sorrows and nightmares are a part of everyone's life since the day Mordorok's dark forces poured forth from Kadra. All are powerless who openly oppose him, weapons and spells useless. With Mordorok's forces amassing on our border, we do not need another show of magic or power. We need to do the impossible. Ren is, will, is the one who might. The marshal pursed his lips, grunted, and turned to the door, summoning the waiting Silren spy. Ren, we have selected you to fill the final spot in the siege. I am honored, Grand Marshal. Oh, it's a lady. I am honored, Grand Marshal. You know I would dedicate my life to this desperate mission, but surely you also know I am without natural talent in the arcane arts like all the others. I could not challenge Mordorok. <clears throat> the ancient sage smiled. Yes, Mordorok is powerful, immortal, and cannot be harmed by any blade. To brave the fire mount and defeat Mordorok, we must retrieve three unique enchanted artifacts. The light blade, the fire shield, and the bell of sealing. Mordrak's generals guard them vigilantly for their own purposes, but with these we stand a chance. Time grows short, the Grand Marshal pressed. Speed and stealth in small numbers are our best option. Openly opposing Mordrak would bring his full attention upon us in certain doom. The master of stealth we can reach places an, enemy, an army could not help find the artifacts, infiltrate Kadra, defeat Mordrak, light bless us all. Ah. Oh. A month passed as our band of thirty made haste past our borders and into the dark lands. With the fire mount on the horizon, we plotted a clandestine course towards Pagost, the troll fortress, where the first artifact was sealed away. The army of kobolds in their service did not concern us, as our spellcasters were handpicked, powerful in every art. But alas, unbeknownst to us, the siege was undone in an instant when Ragnar, the elder worm, spied us with his dragon gaze from the fire mount. The Demon King's elite fire guard fell upon us in a coordinated surprise attack. My allies were slain. I alone survived. The only non-magical member of our group transported to Kadra's prison for interrogation and execution. Notwithstanding my utter dismay and dread, I recalled the singular prophecy announced upon me at birth by the ardent sage of El Casa. Be blessed with the potential to survive any conflict by fortune and farsight with the threat of life just intact. My faith burned bright. I knew surviving this ordeal and defeating the Demon King remained a possibility, if only I could discern the proper course of action at each step, and unshaken, follow the path of opportunity to its end. Very nice, very nice. I, I, first time I read that all the way through, um, and of course it sets up why you aren't going in there with an army, it's just you, the lone hero, uh, because this Mordorak guy, he's going to be all over you if you bring in a bunch of forces. So. Solo adventure. Mm -hmm. And uh, how to play. Let me see. That nice illustrations here, right? So, okay. So you take on the role of Ren, Elkasi spy, lone survivor of the Siege of Thirty. Guide her through a series of maze like puzzle levels on her quest to defeat the Demon King Mordor. Strategically navigate the tricks and traps of each level, find keys to unlock doors, acquire magical elixirs to boost your life. Gain weapons and armor to increase your combat prowess. Be on the lookout for enchanted artifacts and unique items and treasure. Defeat enemies in the cleanest way possible and use your wits to survive each area. Each level is a puzzle to solve. The elements of each level are laid out on the page as follows. Let me see if I can just move this a tiny bit closer just for this part so you can see a little bit better. Uh, probably my hand shaking is not going to help anything. So there's... Um, Basically, you've got on the left page, there's uh, kind of a more informational section, or like supporting information. There's a kind of flavor text, story description, and area. Title of the level, there's a starting, oh, that's the right side, okay. Um, for the enemies that appear inside of the, I'll call it the play page. Uh, now there's already a name for it, the uh, area map of the level, okay. So for enemies that appear on this area map of the level, there's a description of them and their stats off to the left. Uh, then you've got also a description of equipments uh, and items in the area that, in, along with stats that go along with them. So, solving puzzles. Begin at the point mark start, 
At any time you may move anywhere there is an unobstructed path, pick up accessible equipment at any time, do so by circling it on your map indicating you've collected it, applying this effect to your stats or inventory. Where obstacles are in the way, you must follow the rules for interacting with them. See items section for common examples. Where enemies block a path, you must first defeat them in combat to continue along that route. See enemy section. Following successful combat, mark your defeated foe off the map. The pathway is now open. If your life points drop to zero or, or below, you become stuck without any other play options, you lose. Restart the puzzle by clearing the map, restarting your stats, trying from the beginning, play blah, blah, blah. If you reach the, part, if the, if you reach the point mark goal with life points remaining, congratulations, you've solved the puzzle. Oh, surplus inventory, extra keys, etc. They're not carried over to the next puzzle. So that's important. You have to think of each one of these puzzles we look at as a self-contained challenge. Uh, surreal. If I wanted to center the book, believe me, <laughs> I have fussed with this a fair amount, and I'm just not gonna, not gonna. You know when when you're playing blackjack and you, you get dealt like 19. This is a 19. I I don't want to draw another card. Uh, okay. I'm not going to read all this out loud. I, I feel like that might not be the best presentation. But this is a page uh, discussing items. Uh, so this idea that as you, as you walk over items, they will affect your stats, and you would make a record of, of, uh, of the stats. Um, Locked portal represents the door is locked shut. This path is currently blocked. You may not pass. And okay, so there's obstacles, and you have to sort of pay to get past them. I mean, everything that's an obstacle in here has a, a sort of payment to make. Um, okay, equipment. Uh, in most areas, you have opportunities to obtain equipment that raise your attack and defense attributes for the duration of the puzzle. It doesn't carry over. Improved attack and defense values reduce the damage taken from enemy encounters makes sense. Uh, so you basically want to make sure that you acquire things in, in the way that's going to um, make the best use of your limited resources. The enemies. There's a fair amount about the enemies here. I'm not going to go over it all, but again they have a, an attack, they have a damage, and there's a, a table that kind of sums up what their effect is going to be if you attack them at different levels of, of your own two stats, which are attack and defense. Um, and we'll get into that some more. There's a boss enemy, too, at the end of each, each level. I kind of want to get into playing this a little bit more. Um, let's see how I can do. Wait a minute. What if I... What if I Does this even work? Whoa! Whoa! Why didn't I do that in the first place? No way! Two of clubs! That's what happened! <laughs> I'm like thinking, how am I going to switch back and forth between the left page and the right page in my limited area? The first puzzle to solve is it was right here. Okay, now I'm feeling better about showing this off. Okay, so uh, I may be simulating too, like somebody who's just impatient to play the game and uh, kind of screws up a fair amount when they're starting out. Uh, so bear with me. I'm not an expert in this game. I'm not. I played little bits and pieces of it a little bit. Okay, so here's here's your starting point. And I mean, just to give you the gist, I, I'm not going to do this like for real playing the game yet, but just imagine, okay, you're starting here, you want to get over to here to the skull. And you could be at home, you could be on your couch, you could be at a Starbucks, you can be anywhere playing this. Uh, it's a, kind of a nice thing about like a, a good paper game like this. You can be on an airplane. Um, it's, so, so, you know, I, I ended up doing stuff like, um, okay, I, I 
I can't go there yet because I need to get a key. So I'll go through this passage, I'll get the key. And then there's some stats up here. Those are going to change around based on things that I get. Like this elixir here is going to increase my life, which is, uh, where is the life tracked? Anyways, I'll come back to that. Okay. So then if you had enough keys and you could keep going, and eventually if you've um, managed your resources correctly, when you get to this boss at the end, um, you'll be able to beat the boss. But if you chose a path that used your resources poorly, um, maybe took you into battles you weren't prepared for yet, then you're more likely to come up short someplace along this path. And yeah, this is nice. It's, it's kind of a joy to have like a really um, beautiful thing and you just write all over it. And <laughs> because it's laminated, you can just uh, erase it and start over again. Um, so now let me think about this a little more slowly. I started here. Um, and I think, yeah, you, you all can see that pretty well. Okay, so I started here. I'm thinking I can go here. That gets me further along. Um, th there's a note here that says the way you were brought in is blocked, find another way out. Okay, so that's basically not an area I'll ever go to. There's a locked door here. I can't go through it. I don't have a key. So it says here the, the font is really small. You may not be able to read it. You can squeeze through tight spaces. So I can go through this little space and get the key. Okay, there's a note here that says, don't waste your key on this lock. Don't need to go that way. It doesn't go any place. There's like this sort of chasm here. It would take you nowhere. Um, so now I have kind of the first, maybe not, not obvious choice. Oh, let's see. Let me catch up with chat. Seems like there's not quite enough resources to kill the Guardian unless I'm misreading the numbers on those elixirs. Five on each elixir. Yes, that's true. Okay, so now I, I have one key, and I'm going to update my stats up here. I'm just going to put one. Um, so I have a decision. I could go down, or I like to say south. I could go south. I could get another key. And that's kind of free, uh, because I'll lose a key, but I'll get another key anyways. So it doesn't hurt me in any way to go down and get that key. I would be like in exactly the same state I was before, I think. Um, so I'll go down and get that key. I, I, I do think, you know, I might need to come back here and get this elixir, which increases my life. Uh, and now I'm, I'm trying, because I skipped over a few things, I'm trying to remember, is this, is this heart here? Is that the life? Anyways, I will just snap up this other key too. So now I have, I have two keys. Two keys. Um, and again, like I, I can go through here, but then, um, okay, I use up both my keys. I get one key back. Does it matter yet? I don't know that I want to get this elixir right away because I see a lot of doors up ahead. And it feels like I I, I don't I don't need to get that elixir yet. That's just my thought. So I'll go through here. That means I got zero keys now because I lose my two keys up, up top. So I'll get one back. Okay. Then any place where it only it costs me less keys to go through than what I get, I just go in and get it. I mean, it's just a no-brainer. I'm all about like figuring out the things that are obvious in this game first. 
So if I go in here, yeah, I'll lose two keys, but I'll get three keys. So it's just like a net gain of one key. And Mike, you gotta you gotta yell at me if I if I mess something wrong. Okay. This other one here, same deal. I'll lose one key, but I'll get two. So I might as well go in. I mean, wouldn't you? This gives me three keys. So now I have a wealth of keys. And I, I I know that I'm well let me let me think about this guy here, this this guardian. Um, suppose I just attacked him right now. Heart equals hit point, sword equals attack rating. Okay. So I'm just I just noticed that, that people were still chatting and my, my chat went over and not scrolled down to catch up. So I just, I'm catching up with stuff people said quite a while ago. Um, hearts are HP, sword is attack. Yeah. Okay. Well, Okay, here, here's my question, because I kind of like skimmed through this really fast. The elixir says it increases life. Is that like another stat I should be tracking? Okay, so wh what do I... What hit points do I start with? Okay, so the heart, the hardest hit points. The hardest hit points is life. Okay, that's fine. I get it. I get it. I was I was getting confused because I was thinking of back to the uh, kind of Tower of the Sorcerer and Drought RPG days with the uh, defense as an extra stat to uh, track as well. Um, so, okay, so, so this guy, according to the table that's off here on the left page, um, will mean that if I am at attack level one, right now I'm at attack level zero, you can see up here it's marked at zero. Um, I will take 12 damage in a fight against, and I'll be game with three health. Now this, yeah, yeah, I, I do like that you are adding more stats here than are needed. So this little dagger here will increase my uh, attack level to one, which is like the first thing I would need to do to have any kind of plausible hope of, of hurting this guy. In fact, you literally cannot hurt this guy until you get to attack level one. It says in the chart off to the left. Um, the next thing I would need to do is get enough hit points or life by this little heart um, to withstand the damage of 12 that will come from this fellow right here, this boss, Kagro Dungeon Guardian. So I see all the resources I need to do that. Now I've got lots of keys. Um, I still don't want to waste my keys. I need to kind of replenish them as I go in order to make it through. So I think if I have to get this elixir, this elixir, and this attack dagger, um, then I'll go into here first, which takes me down to one key. And, wait a minute, did I mess up in my tally? I only got one key left, which would only let me go into, I think I messed up my tally. 
Um, so let me. Well, 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 um, I mean, this is kind of a, a thing that's. We start from the lower right with one key, right down here. Okay, let me back up to here. Okay, from here with one key. We'll go in here and get two keys, which brings me to three. Go in here and get one key, which brings me to four. Okay. Okay, so those are the easy decisions to make. Um, oh, okay. You know what? This isn't so hard. Let's just start over. It's the talking and figuring out what a tally. Okay. Let me just, this will not be that hard to just go through again. Okay. Well, the thing is, you have to get each puzzle exactly. Like, there isn't any variance in the solution that you can do. Or if you do find it, then uh, you're, like, really smart. So, one key there. Come through here. I, st I still have one key. I use one key. Hit angle and back. Uh, here, I've got two. Go through there, I'm down to zero, and then come back here, and back up to one. Okay. So, as you say, I can't go in here first, because that would take two keys. So I just need to go in the other room first. Because I only have one key at the, at the point where I'm at this door. I come back out, not with one key, but with two keys. So then, I can go... into here and there's a net gain of one key from there brings me to where did I go wrong again? three okay so I'm out there with three keys I go in here, I'll be down to two keys, and, and I'll be home free. Okay. So I go in here with three keys, use them all up, come back out with two keys, and, importantly, the health, the hit points, the life goes up to eight. Still not enough to kill. Cadre Dungeon Guardian. But I'm on the way. So all these doors I'm going back to, I don't have to pay for them again, they're already open. Uh, just retracing my steps. And I'll go through this door again with my one of my two remaining keys. Only got one key left, but it's gonna be alright. Uh, grab the elixir. Brings me up to 13. 13 hit points. I'm ready to fight. Go all the way back through. Oh, I'm not quite ready to fight. That would well, that would have been hubris if I just would have won. And then as Surreal says, I need to I need to slow my roll, grab the a little dagger here that ups my attack level. Because according to the chart on the left, I need that attack level to survive this. And then I go barely now. I vanquish the guardian. With my, my powerful bare hands is what I do. And then I think I'm going to erase all the stuff on here because I want this little prototype to live a long time. I don't want to have a bunch of like residue on it that just stays there forever. I'll go play it again later on. Okay, that was that was one level of this game. I'm pretty slow.
And I'm wildly happy that this ridiculous camera setup is allowing like Mike and Surreal to kind of play along with me. Um, yeah, you just gotta clean up after yourself though, that's all it is. And then I guess the other thing is, um, like if you were really trying to keep it uh, pristine, you might like get like a like a little paper towel that's wet down a little bit or a wet, wet nap and but uh, yeah, okay. So now we're on to the next thing. Two types of monsters. We got the cavern slime. Who's not quite as big deal as that that boss guy was in the last one. He's, he has. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm curious about the results of your experiment. Um, so, so, okay, the cavern slime has, he, at, if the player's at attack level one, this cavern slime, who is, where is this cavern slime? According to the icon, it's all over the place. Here, 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 here. All those little inky splotches are, are slime. Um, so they will do two damage to me, and that's after, no, I, I, I get to keep a starting upgrade of attack one, okay. Um, two weeks, so you could have a drunken night of uh, uh, tiny little passages and just pass out over the top of it and wake up two weeks later doesn't matter, you can just wipe it all off. It's going to be fine. Um, cavern slime is going to hit me with two damage wherever I go. Giant slime. Giant slime, who is the boss monster. Uh, it's going to do six damage. So I'm starting here. I'm always looking for the easy options first. And of course, there's one right in the room I can just take. This elixir that gives me three health. And for whatever reason, the, the uh, order of the key and the heart are switched around here. Am I right about that? Oh, yeah. Okay, so that gives me three health, which takes me up to six. Okay. So, options. I can't go over here. I don't have any keys. I have to go through cavern slime. I'm going to take two damage. There's, there's just nothing else that can happen. I take two damage. Brings me down to four. I'm going to snag the key though. That much is good news. Um, I can keep going. In fact, that's the only option I have at this point. That means two more damage. Takes me down to two. Okay, so here's the thing that I, I think I, I did it when the puzzle started getting a little bit hard for me. Um, I can put like a little A here if I want, and off over here I can say A. And this is like a, a point where if I, if I want to try out some different options, um, and then just kind of get back to where my stats were at this little checkpoint. Um, I can just kind of wipe the board clean and then head back to the A. I know A corresponds to this level of stats up here. So it's almost like a, making a little save game right there. Although I, I did it too early because here's another free thing I can get. I can get, um, I can get some more life. So I'll just include that in A. Okay. So then my options. I can, I can go this way and get more life. In fact, it's another one of those uh, kind of freebie decisions. Like, I will not lose more than I gain by going down there. So, I might as well wait a minute. So I lose three and get three. 
No, no, I would lose two and get three. Yeah. Exactly, it's a one hit point bonus. It's a, that's a freebie decision. Like, you don't have to think that hard about it. Um, so, that brings me up to four. Okay, I have to go through here. At this point, like, I'm still, like, all my decisions are, um, I'm very confident in them. Like, I don't feel like I could have done anything better. So this takes me down to two. And since I feel like there's no way I could have made any better decisions, I'm going to erase the A here. And I'm going to move it. I'll get that, get that guy there first. I'm going to move it here. So that brings me up to three. And A is like, it's like a save slot. Um, you know when you're playing the, like a video game and, and you save in the slot one and you get a little further and you save again into slot one? Um, it's kind of like that. So like I, I knew there was no point in like sort of keeping track of what was over here because I made it here in an optimal way. I'm sure of that. Then I gotta start thinking a little bit harder. David, yeah, if, if I'm honest, it, it feels to me like the there should be a little consistency there. But yeah. Eas easily dealt with. Alright, so I'm, I'm just going to ask Surreal, which way do you want me to go next? Okay, if we go along the top, we'll need two more keys. Meaning like, okay, if we went there, yeah, we'd be up. We need to spend it. Eight hit points to get those keys. Okay, you're thinking like I, I'm because I'm like talking as I go. I, I'm like I'm kind of being like really short-sighted about this. Um, I'm not even surprised. You're kind of like racing ahead of my logic. Um, but let me let me just look at it for a little bit. So. I'm it feels like, for the moment, it's, it's the end of the freebie decisions. Um, so I could go up there, and I could, I could get the key. I mean, I could lose a key and get more life. Um, if I go down here, it's sort of like a... This is sort of like the, the opposite of a freebie decision. There's no reason for me to go down here ever, ever. Because if you think about it, if you think about it, like, I'll, I'll always lose if I go down here. So I'm just going to X this off. I mean, I never want to go down there. I don't even care about fighting that guy or getting that elixir. Um, okay. It feels like I got to go here first. But I haven't, like, thought it out in detail. Okay, do you, so help me narrow this down, or, or simplify it. Do you think I should first go up here to get this elixir, or do you think I have to go west first? I will try one of those two options. Okay, so west then. Right, so let's head that way. I've got my checkpoint there. Very easy to come back to if I want. Um, so I lose two and gain two. Actually, that's another freebie. That is another freebie. Lose two and gain two is a freebie. Um, yeah. I, honestly, I can just move move the A over. I could do it again, too. I can, I can keep going to here. And the A is over here now. So this is my confident path. Um, adjacent to the start. Oh, I forgot. I can go all the way back here. <laughs> Boy, I totally forgot about that. Uh, cool. I'm also going to be like less ridiculous. I'm not going to like draw a path all the way back because I realize I can. I can just kind of. 
continue it off that one. So, but the, the only bad thing about that is like if I want to use my checkpoint system, then it's it's like a little bit harder to restore to it. But I, I, I can I can still do it. Oh, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. This is, this is like part of the joy of this is you also have to come up with like your own system of record keeping as you go. Um, so you get like some markers like with different things. So this little ProMark pack, it comes like with a black, a red, and a blue pen. So I can use those too. So say I come over there, um, then I would lose, I'd be out of keys. I would be up to six life. Okay, that was me taking Surreal's advice without even thinking about it, which might have been stupid. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. But he's got confidence. He seems like he, it seems like he knows. He knows the way. Um, so I, I can clearly come down here and get keys if I want. So though I'm out of keys, I'm able to get more keys at a small cost. Uh, okay, and then Tyrell says, got enough hit points to kill the two slimes. Trade four hit points for six hit points, leaving me with eight. Okay. So you're saying enough hit points to kill the two slimes, meaning this one, this one. Oh, these two slimes. Oh, I see. Okay, so I would need both those keys, you think? Oh, okay. Right, because I need to get this too. Okay. So let's let's just do what you say. And let's go here. Which gives me an extra key. I'll just do both of them at the same time. So, let's go, if I go through both of these, check my tally, please. I'm a, I make a terrible accountant. Uh, so, I went down there and got the two keys. Uh, did, I, did, I, did I add them? No, okay, I did. Okay, cool. train. Train's alright. So other things I don't like as much. Evangelicals with uh, loudspeakers outside at times. Uh, alright. So it's real you you think you think I you think I can still keep going with this or you think you think we botched it? So I can go back. I, I can basically take the red off and get to my, my known good point. Okay. Alright, so... Uh, we'll need... Let's, let's think about... Like, the end goal is to get to this guy. Uh, and have enough oomph to kill him when you get there. So... Unlock the two doors between the start and the boss. Okay, let's try that. So if we head off this way, we'll use up both of our keys. Okay, so keys will go down to zero. 
health goes up to 5 plus the 2 we've got goes to 7. And how much does it take to kill the boss? Well, I mean, actually, it just takes us, uh, I mean, we, uh, we have to have seven life because even though we'll strike the boss, the boss is going to strike back and give us six damage. So we have exactly enough. Surreal has taken us to victory. Killed that boss there. Uh, the giant slime made a huge mess. Got all over the place. It was really gross. Um, now the, uh, the loving care part of this whole thing. Yeah, it, I would, looking at the illustration, I would say it probably bleeds blue. It's not wounded, but it's got these like little, uh, well, I don't know, its skin is all blue. And it's got these things that look kind of like, uh, uh, I don't know, like antennas, but they, they go down instead of up. First I thought they were like something liquid dripping from it. That's why I was saying it had blue blood. I do actually have, here, hold on, hold on. You're right. Let's, 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 let's be legit with this. important to do things the right way. Right. You know, with these things, you never worry about that. Who, who's watching, whatever. Uh, and a few, a few people chatting is often better company than uh, 17 people chatting. I've got like just proper spray. It just it's made for like whiteboards. Um, I suppose this is a small test. Is that gonna have a problem with this? I don't think it will. Uh, yeah, I tend to have better conversations when there's not like a crazy number of people. Plus, the other thing is <coughs> there's um, going to be like a <coughs> an archive of this. Just a, a video that's on YouTube, and people will check that out too. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I, I it's, I'm just kind of happy to, to have some people following along. Actually, it's, it's, uh, I appreciate you being here. Um, all right. What what time is it even? It's it's seven. Okay, we're doing good. Let's see. I got this arranged right. No, I don't. It's off. There we go. Let's move it up a little bit. There we go. Um. Defense. Defense. All right. Favorite part, looking for freebies. Are there any freebies? The caption here says, acquire armor to increase defense and reduce damage from combat. I feel like Mike is taking me to a place where there's not, gonna, not gonna be more freebies. You gotta think harder now. Uh, 
so, so, so. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So the 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 different monsters are here. Um. There's two. And they're not actually, neither of them is like a boss enemy, because they're both interspersed throughout the level. Yeah, it feels like, since probably the purpose of this level was to introduce the defense element, that that's going to be like one of the first things we end up getting, but I don't want to jump to that conclusion. Okay, so um, the Roach Scout, Roach Scout is going to, oh, it's got, I'm going to think about two stats now. Okay, six defense. Okay, what? Okay, I, I gotta think about these these tables now, because they're a little bit different. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. So, this first column here is like when you start out in your unupgraded self, um, you'll take two damage from the hatchling roach, the little smaller roach. You take six damage from the Roach Scout. Uh, if you up yourself to one defense, then this column over here on the right is the applicable one. Um, all right, so if I start out with, with five health, and as Surreal points out, in this state, I, I can't do anything which, with these Roach Scouts. They would just kill me instantly. Like, um, so it's a real saying let's get the key guarded by the four roaches and that would take me down initially to it'd be 5 minus 2 is 3 plus 6 is 9 Minus two is seven. And I get a key. If I just blindly follow, blindly follow, the advice is surreal. What? I misread the chart? Let's see. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay. I didn't have to un undo all that, but anyway, so we'll go do that. Get that little six. Okay. So. Okay, we have three hit point after getting the key. And the key is up to one. Okay. So we're back out there. And it feels like. I just I feel like I'm in a hurry to get this, but is that the right move? Only one of these paths is going to be the right one for the solution. I just really want that that shield down there. I just I'm I'm longing to have it. Let's do it. Let's make a save state. It's going to be. A right here. Okay. Then I don't know. Let's so so let's let's try. Let's try. Pull out the other colored pen. I didn't even think until this session to try these other colored pens. Uh, I kind of like this. So, which potion are you misreading? The one we already went through, or the new one? Um, so this one appears six. This one's two. Okay, the new one's two. So if we weren't in there, we lose our key, and we gain the defense and the armor, or and the uh, elixir. Uh, so that would give us five, key down to zero, Defense up to one. Whoops, I don't want to use that row. Let's go down. Okay. Okay, so then you'd be 105. Um, okay. 
we will need a, another key. Well, I don't know if that's true. Let's see. So, uh, we can't kill a scout. That would take us to zero. Because the scout at one defense would take five hit points. But we, and we can get some more hit points and then go get the key. So I, I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna go in here, get the friggin' seven hit points. That gets me excited. 12, lose my key, we're keyless. We had one key and, and we used it. We come back out. Oh, wait a minute. You're right. Because. Dude, wait a minute. Yeah, you know, there's only, there's only um, two keys in this whole level and there's three doors. So assuming that we that th this wasn't put here as a giant red herring it almost guarantees that we never come into this it's like a proof okay so let me uh, restore my save points so I get the tally right okay and then go in here it's gonna be to five zero one okay Kill the hatchling up north instead. And then we get the four. And that's only just knocking us down to four. Wait a minute, no. Then we get we get knocked down to four, but we come back up to eight. Yeah, exactly. Eight hit points. Um so I I, I, I'm feeling pretty good about this. There's not too many options left. Uh, we kill the scout, as you say, which takes off five hit points, taking us to three. We get back a key. Uh, one. And then we go through here with our remaining key. And then we'll uh, go up six to nine. And then these two guys, yeah, as you say. Um, well, I'm not sure if the shield was the wrong move. It probably was. But we definitely don't have enough this way. And it felt like the most significant um, decision we made affecting it was grabbing the shield. So let's, I don't know, back to the checkpoint, I think. Let's try it without going for the shield first. No, well, let's just... Okay. Oh, I thought, I thought you were just uh, sitting there in the darkness, tinting your fingers like Mr. Burns. The evil smile. Watching us uh, struggle inside of your creation. All right. <laughs> okay. So it's so real. We got. We got to figure this out. We got to figure this out. That's right. Okay, we kill the Roachling, and we get the four. Okay, so kill the Roachling, that's this guy here. Um, so that, the thing I don't like about that though is like, if we kill this Roachling now, we lose, we lose uh, 
two two hit points instead of one. Like, how do we ever do better than we did on on our last trip through when we came up short? Um, Yeah, I'm with you. Um, unless this is a total red herring, which isn't out of the question, um, then this is just not a passage we'd ever go down. So we know that this, that this one we have to go through, the top one we have to go through. And we feel kind of like the whole purpose of this puzzle is probably to show up the fence. So. This one, you feel like you probably have to go through it too. There's only two keys, so I feel like we'll never ever go in this one. I almost wonder if we missed Tally in our last run. Yeah, I wonder if we just made a mistake, though. Okay. Alright, but Michael, I'll, I'll ask you for one hint, just in the pur for the purpose of uh, keeping it going. Um, yes or no? Do we need the shield for this, or do we get the shield in this puzzle? Not I'm asking when. Okay, so that that tells me that for sure we'll never go here. Okay, I'm all ears, surreal. sense? Oh, it makes a lot of sense, actually. Uh, get rid of our save point, even. I'm with you. Okay, so we'll go up to here. We'll lose Kachunk, we'll lose two. Uh, and we'll gain four. So overall gain two puts us to seven, as you said. Kill the scout without the shield? Okay. Okay. Scout without the shield. That's a bold move. That's a bold move. Cause you just you just took yourself all the way down to one. Took yourself all the way down to one, buddy. Go through here, lose our key, our only key. We get two health, one defense. Bring us up to three, defense one. Oh, yeah. So then, go back up here. Even uh, this is all reckless, I'm not even going to do save points. Uh, okay, Let's kill a pair of hashlings. Cut in two for six, okay. So, go through here, go back down to one again, near death, gonna die, then we come back up to seven, okay, then I have to go up and take a hit here, right, so, boom, take us down to five, um, 
Six all the way up to eleven. Kill this guy. Oh kill this guy. Oh with one hit point left. With one hit point left. We made it. A lot of these I I I just assume you're going to end up with one hit point left at the end. It, it seems to be <laughs> it's very dramatic. Like every level at the end of it you're just almost dead. I, it seems it would be that way. It, we might be surprised. Josh is. Um, so I, I'm not going to start another level. Um, I, I do want to, to uh, show off like the Kickstarter thing a little bit. Um, I'll just kind of flip through this so you can, you can kind of see like what else is here. There's a lot of variety in the art from one page to the next. Um, we, we move on. It's kind of like almost a call out to the Drod games, which uh, Caraville sells as well. Queen Roach, Dungeon Roach, Roach Nest. Uh, love it. Very nice artwork. Um, there's stories that go along with the different um, levels that you're inside of. So there's a lot of flavor here that goes along with it. Uh, and then I see a page where there's little hints written upside down. And it seems like, yeah, they're okay, they're progressive puzzle hints, meaning. If you didn't want to have the entire puzzle given away to you, if you just got really stuck and you wanted to keep making progress on it, you could just read like the, the top hint off of the page. You might do something like put your hand over the, the bottom hints and then look at it upside down. Oh wait, is it a mirror thing? Oh wait a minute. So you couldn't flip it upside down. It's a mirror thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's it's horizontally flipped. Okay. So you could you could just stare at it and you'll be able to kind of read it um, without bringing a mirror over. Um, so I mean I, I I can just read it. You don't have enough. So it's actually a, a pretty elegant way to make the solutions be simple and invisible um, and accessible. But if you don't want to be able to read them uh, by accident, you won't. Uh, then there's complete puzzle solutions. I'm flipping past that. I don't want, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. So like if you just said screw it, I just I just won't pass this one. I hate this one. Um, I don't think that's a good idea though. I think I think you should try to push through them because the next one will be harder, right? So you might as well figure out whatever it is that's stopping you on the current puzzle. Um, on the other hand, uh, the way puzzles work, sometimes the one that you think is at a certain difficulty level as a designer might accidentally be a little bit harder. Or just for one person, it might be a lot harder. So this is not the full, full game. Like, Mike, how many how many um, puzzles are in the full thing? I I should go over to the the Kickstarter page. That's what I'm gonna do. Not before. Do that. I'm assuming Mike is still on, but this is like a small amount of the, of the puzzle. It's a portion of them. Um, so I am going to change over to computer computer view. Uh, da, da, da. 
so I can show the Kickstarter pages, which I'm pretty excited about too. Never mind the, the little message I have up in the top about trenchers that's applying to something else. Just rearranging my furniture a little bit here. That was one chapter that was introductory, introductory. And I'm actually, I'm gonna play the, the video um, for the Kickstarter campaign. Let's see, I have, let me see, one second, over the table. So this is the URL. Yeah, I, f I felt even for introductory puzzles, those were challenging. Of course, there is the thing where if you um, are kind of talking with other people socially while you're solving something, it's not like the easiest way to solve something. So. So maybe, you know, if you're just kind of um, more quiet and contemplative, it goes a little bit faster and the extra challenge is warranted. Uh, and this, this whole mechanic was extremely well explored and tested out in the computer form in a game called Drawed RPG. Um, so like if there's anybody I would trust to put a bunch of puzzles together and have them be high quality, it would be Mike for sure. Uh, yeah, let's let's play this video. I saw it earlier. It's pretty cool. David, thanks for hanging out. I'm cutting off the edge of my video a little bit with my uh, OBS stuff. They really mean it. There is just one way to survive. There is just one way. Very nice. Uh, very nice. Um, so, Jesus, Mike, uh, you're like, on your first day, you're already past the one-third mark on day one. Uh, 203 backers. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. So, like, anybody that is thinking about backing this and they're kind of worried, like, uh, am I just going to be wasting my time signing up for this stuff? No, I would, I mean, look, day one, he's one third of the way there. Um, so I, I would definitely back the project and not like in some altruistic, let's help out Mike way. You saw the game. It's a freaking cool game. 
Um, yeah, well, I mean, I know how Mike arrived at this number. It's basically his, his costs um, in a, a printing run. So he did the math to figure out if I, Mike Reimer, do this print run that will satisfy a certain number of customers, then it needs to be this amount of money. Um, so if a whole lot less came in, then I would assume um, that print run would start becoming less economical. Uh, now that doesn't mean that like he won't sell a whole bunch beyond that goal. Um, or, I mean, there might be a lot more people interested in it, but I'm assuming, I'm speaking way too much for Mike here. My guess is, my guess is that that initial number was picked as uh, what is the practical go number for this project, not as, like, how much can I get or anything like that. And, Mike, I'm probably talking out of school, so I'll just say I really don't know that much about it. I'm just guessing. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, I backed it. I just, uh, yeah, to say go Mike, but, um, but more importantly, I just want like my own full copy of the twisty little passages cause it's pretty cool. Uh, there just aren't many things like that. It's like a, a physical thing. Uh, you can write on it. It's got beautiful artwork. You can actually just write all over this thing with impunity. That looks great. Uh, that is just rewarding in a way that's hard to explain. Yeah, I mean, that'd be cool too. I mean, uh, draw people, you know, they... Uh, there's there's draw people that love draw and some of them are into draw RPG and some draw RPG people are into draw some not and this is like another thing where uh, you get to expand the Venn diagram and uh, be interesting to see if a, a like a different kind of community shapes up around this this game and uh, how it interplays with the other where it, where it takes Mike next uh, so I'm uh, I'm very interested in uh, how it does. Uh, I hope, hope Mike, uh, you get exactly what you wanted out of it, and uh, then some. So, I I have uh, got to take off pretty soon here. Um, there might be. Let me just check a few things. So, yeah. I'm going to take this URL and it will be in the description of the stream. So if you are watching this on Twitch um, and you're wondering how do I go into this page to maybe back it, uh, yeah, you can like search through the video. I know that's annoying. You want to be able to copy and paste something or just click on a link. That will be in the description. And uh, sure, Mike, you bet. Uh, and also, if you're watching this on YouTube, yes, also in the description, you will see that link there. Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot, Mike, for making the, the great game. Thanks, Surreal, for helping me play through it and actually helping me not, like, uh, get stuck uh, <laughs> as I went along. Helped me keep a little momentum going there. Um, and uh, I'll catch you all later.